How's it going everybody? Wayne here. I have some more games I'll be adding to the N64 library today, but first a little bit of an update. I'll be taking the price counter out of the videos from this point forward. I'll still be telling you how much it costs to complete the entire collection at the end, but for each video I'm going to be taking it out. And there's a couple reasons for that. First reason being, I got called a baller. I mean, I want to be a baller. Shot collar. 20 inch blades on the Impala. But the truth is, I only have 15s on my minivan. So after that comment, it got me thinking. You know, somebody just coming in who hasn't seen my top five tips on collecting complete libraries doesn't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Where I'm selling stuff off on eBay to get money to spend on eBay to complete this collection. I'm not just making all this money in the world and blowing it on this N64 collection. I've been collecting a long time so I have a lot of games that I can sell to fund this collection. Another reason is I really don't want to discourage anybody. Again, if you haven't seen my top five tips for collecting complete libraries, you wouldn't know that I start with the rare and expensive games first for the most part. So if you're just watching one of my videos for the first time and you see I'm only at 33 games at almost $2,000, it'll raise your eyebrows. I'm here to serve a purpose, to spread a message, to help you see what games to look out for for the N64. Not discourage you from collecting the library. I'll still tell you how much I paid for certain games and I'll tell you how much it costs at the end. So at the end, you know, obviously you can see that that price came over a long period of time rather than just all at once. It's really not about the money, it's about the games. So let's check out what new games I got for the N64 library. First up we have Diddy Kong Pancakes. So funny story, whenever I buy like a rare game off eBay, I'll always message the seller and I'll be like, hey, can you please ship that in a box? And when I bought one of those games, the seller messaged back real sarcastically and he's like, no, I was just gonna put it in an envelope with like 30 stamps on it and send it to you. And it does sound like a stupid question. I mean, it deserved a sarcastic response because who would mail a complete box in 64 game in an envelope? But I didn't do that with Diddy Kong Racing and it came in this. I did message the seller about it and he was kind enough to give me a $6 partial refund. So all in all, I only paid $17 for a complete box copy of the game, which isn't really bad at all. I'll eventually upgrade the box. Diddy Kong Racing was developed and published by Rare and released for the N64 in North America in 1997. Diddy Kong Racing was a racing game where you controlled a car, hovercraft, or plane. The objective of the game was to win races and collect balloons. The more balloons you collected, the more levels you would unlock. This game was a blast in single player or with a group of friends. You could choose from many characters including Diddy, Banjo, and Conker. The ultimate goal in this game is to get enough balloons to unlock and beat Whizpig in a final race. This is a game I had when I first got the system and I enjoyed playing this a lot with my dad and my friends. It's a really fun game. It's no surprise that this was the 8th best selling in 64. And Diddy Kong Racing puts us up to 34 games in the collection. Next up we have Star Shot. If you're going for the complete in box N64 library, get this game out of the way as soon as possible. It was a nightmare for me to find the first time around. The first time collecting the N64 library, this game took me three months to even see a box or manual for it. Star Shot Space Circus Fever was developed and published by Infogrames and it released for the N64 in 1999. It's a platforming game where Starshot comes down to try to find out who destroyed their missile parade that advertised a circus they were having. It's really not that fun of a game. For starters, you use the Z button to jump with. Everybody knows in a platformer, you use the A button to jump with. The only reason I tell you to get this one knocked out quickly is because it's so hard to find. Although there's a couple copies on eBay now, this was the hardest game for me to find complete in box when completing my last collection. And Starshot Space Circus Fever is game number 35 for the N64 library. Next up we have another game that you'll want to try to get knocked out quickly. And that game is Duck Dodger starring Daffy Duck. 
Duck Dodgers starring Daffy Duck is another platformer by Infogrames and released in 2000. If you find this game for less than 100 bucks complete in box, I'd try to get it. I found this copy for $80 shipped. You frequently see this game in the 200 plus range, complete in box. Duck Dodgers is a really fun platforming game. You control Daffy and run around the levels collecting atoms to unlock more levels. If you're a fan of N64 platformers, this game is definitely worth playing. And Duck Dodgers starring Daffy Duck is game number 36 for the collection. Next up we have a snowmobiling game, Player Snowcross. Player Snowcross was published by Vatical Entertainment and released for the N64 in 2000. Player Snowcross is a snowmobile racing game. You could race with up to four players. However, only three of the ten tracks could be played in the four player mode. This game, like Wipeout, was a game I found at Big Lots for $10 sealed back in the day. Although they had tons of copies brand new at Big Lots, the box and manual for this game are slightly on the more uncommon side. The controls in this game suck, the graphics suck, and the whole game is really just a bad choppy experience altogether. Many snowmobile fans were probably disappointed after finding this game under their Christmas tree in 2000. And Player Snowcross puts us up to 37 games in the library. Next up I made a trade. I traded a rare GameCube console for a Japanese Pikachu edition in 64, complete in box. And I also traded for a bunch of loose N64 American version games that I didn't have yet. And those games are Hot Wheels Turbo Racing, World Driver, Bomberman 64, which this game has gone up in price, Donkey Kong 64, F-Zero X, two copies, Monster Truck Madness, Win Back, Indiana Jones the Infernal Machine, Robotron, Quest 64, Madden 2002, NBA Hangtime, Turok Rage Wars, Iggy's Wrecking Balls, Ridge Racer 64, Yoshi's Story, two copies of that, and Castlevania. And I'll be talking about these games as I get the boxes for them. Castlevania was a box I already had, so we'll check that out. And Yoshi's Story, I also had the box for that, so we'll check that out as well. Yoshi's Story was developed and published by Nintendo and released for the N64 in 1998. Yoshi's Story was originally going to be called Yoshi's Island 64 and released for the N64 DD. They changed that and released it as Yoshi's Story on the cartridge. Yoshi's Story is an interesting side-scrolling platform game where you run around collecting fruit. The fruit affects Yoshi's mood. Once Yoshi has eaten enough fruit in a level, 30 pieces, the level is over. And Yoshi's Story puts us up to 38 games in the collection. Finally, Castlevania. Castlevania was developed and published by Konami and released for the N64 in 1999. Castlevania 64 was the first 3D Castlevania game in the series. You would control Carrie or Reinhardt in a quest to stop Count Dracula's return to power. The graphics and camera control are pretty bad in this game. It also suffers from camera slowdown. But if you can get over its downfalls, it's really not that bad of a game. If nothing else, you can go bowling for skeletons. And Castlevania is number 39 in the collection. Let's get these games on the shelf. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe. I'll be completing the entire Complete in Box N64 library right here on the show. Also make sure to leave a thumbs up if you want to be a baller. Until next time, I'm Wayne and thanks for watching.